What up everybody? It's been a while and so we're going to jump back in into uh, the daily chase and uh, it's just been a little bit crazy and gotten kind of out of the uh, mix and uh, the rhythm of doing uh, doing this um, uh, as much as I can. So just jumping back in. So tonight's daily chase is titled You Can't Seek His Face and Save your face. When God tells us you can't see my face, most of us are satisfied that we've done our religious duty and we quickly return to life as usual. When we discover that God's best and deepest treasures require death to self, we often don't pursue him any further. We don't ask the questions we need to ask to find out why his presence doesn't come cheaply Perhaps it's because we think it is important or we are simply afraid of his answer and delight. This burning desire to see God's glory, to see him face to face, is one of the most important keys to revival, reformation, and the fulfillment of God's purposes on the earth. We need to look closely at the 1,500-year pursuit of God's glory by the ancient patriarch Moses. As we noted earlier, when Moses told God, show me your glory, the Lord said, you can't, Moses. Only dead men can see my face. Fortunately, Moses didn't stop there. Unfortunately, the church did. It would have been easy for this man to have been satisfied with God's first answer, but he wasn't. Moses wasn't selfish or presumptuous. He wasn't seeking material things or personal fame. He wasn't even seeking miracles or gifts. And Paul even instructed us to seek after the best gifts in his letter to the Corinthians. Moses simply wanted God. And that is the greatest gift and blessing we can ever give him. Yet Moses had to pursue him and it didn't come easy. And Moses said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee. And I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee and will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. And he said, thou canst not see my face for there shall no man see me and live. And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me, and thou shalt stand upon a rock, and it shall come to pass while my glory passes by, that I will put thee in the cleft of the rock and will cover thee with my hand while I pass by. And I will take away my hand, and thou shalt see my back parts, but my face shall not be seen. Exodus 33, 18 through 23. Now, side, a humorous side note um, on me. Uh, most people, um, if they've ever uh, covered this uh, piece of scripture, uh, piece of scripture uh, with me, um, I always make light of the moment of where I've always wondered uh, when I read over this. I'm like, man, was was God wearing any clothes, or 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 did he just literally? Uh, I mean, let Moses see. Uh, his naked backside, and uh, and how well in shape uh, uh, can we even imagine that God's backside was? Like, I mean, can you just imagine those glutes and those uh, and those hamstrings? And I mean, like full on muscular. Anyways, going too far, but uh, I just I always humorously think that like if it was in literal sense, um, how chiseled. <laughs> is the backside of God. I mean, he must have laps of like just perfection and glutes of perfection and hamstrings of perfection. But yet that wasn't necessarily what the backside of God uh, meant, but that's for a whole nother time. So by the time Moses had this discussion with God about wanting to see his face shut and wanting to see his glory and then, and then having God put him in the cleft of the rock and then God passing by and, um, and letting him see his uh, hind parts that actually, um, I will go ahead and uh, go into this, that the hind parts of God, actually one school of thought believes that the hind parts were what Moses received from Genesis 1 um, all the way to the, uh, to, to the, to the books of Moses where, where it was the revelation from the very beginning of what God would trust into Moses 
to record so that they would have a written scripture in the books of the law and the books of Moses um, in order to have a written history. And that was the hind parts of God from the very past of the beginning of creation to where they were at that moment and to actually include bits and pieces of shadows that of, would foretell of God's plans and purposes in the future. Anyways, that's a school of thought. I really, I really firmly kind of hold to that, um, that that was what the backside of um, God um, was, that uh, God let Moses see so that he could have a written, recorded past uh, from that point on as he, God was leading Moses to lead the Israelites from captivity, captivity into a new identity as God's people. And so as a new identity, you must, you must know and have a, a solid record past to know where you've been from or came from to know where you're going. Um, and so that's, that's just, that was free. Um, but by the time Moses had the discussion with God, the Israelites had already turned their backs to run from God when he asked them to draw near on Mount Sinai. So by the time Moses had had the discussion with God of, God, show me your glory, um, and, and then God saying, no, I'm, I'm going to pass before you, but I'm going to hide you in the rock and you can see my hind parts. At that moment, the Israelites had already turned their backs to run from God when he asked them to draw near on the Mount, on Mount Sinai. It was Moses who had boldly pressed into the cloud of his presence. In fear and trembling, Israel demanded that Moses and the Aaronic priesthood would stand between them and the God they feared because of their sin. Moses often walked into the concealing cloud on the tent of meeting, and somehow he dared to desire even more. Hope you guys are blessed and encouraged, and hope that helps you pursue and chase after him a little bit more. We'll see you next time.